John Fury has said that Tommy Fury will be the end of Jake Paul's reign. He's been on this disruptive mission for the last two years where he's basically been infiltrating the world of mainstream boxing. A couple of months ago, he wrote that hit list of all the people he wants to fight, including Canelo. It sounds crazy to say that, but it, it is there. Um, Tommy Fury, of course. Uh, Javonta Davis, Floyd Mayweather. Everybody that you can imagine in the mainstream boxing world, Jake Paul has aimed his sniper towards in the direction of. And Tommy Fury, who was on that this a couple of months ago is his next fight for December 18th. Now, John Fury, who is Tommy Fury's very active father on social media, has basically said that Tommy will be the end of Jake Paul. He does have insane amounts of belief that Tommy Fury will wipe the floor with Jake Paul and will stop this onslaught into the mainstream boxing world that has been commanded by Paul. Um, and then after he beats Jake Paul, he'll go on to fight his older brother, Logan Paul, and then beat him as well. He said this in a BT Sport boxing interview that was released two days ago. Here is that. I just wanted to ask about Tommy, because I believe he's, he's he's gone out to the state. So this, this fight is on? Yeah, it's on. But you know, until two men's in the ring facing each other, there's a lot, to, there's a lot of water to cover yet with that one. He's out there training, you know, but like I say, I'm not happy with the way they, these other people's performed. But Tommy knows he's up against a stack deck, but he should still beat Jake Paul at a canter. And if he can't, there's no way, for, no way in the boxing world for him. It's make or break for both men. But it'll hit Tommy harder because Tommy's supposed to be a professional boxer. You know, and like I say, Tommy will train hard. He'll do what he's got to do. But has Tommy got the skill to beat him? Yes. Has he got the power to knock him out? Yes. All it is with Tommy is young can he handle a big occasion on the night? You know, but I'm sure he's thought about it many times before. He's got the king of the ring in his corner. Tyson's going to be in his corner that night. I think Tyson's fine out in a few weeks to help him out. You know, because whatever desire he's missing, Tyson will put there. I'm sure of that. But am I confident he can beat Jake Paul? Of course I am. The only thing that can beat Tommy on that night is Tommy. Now, in my personal opinion, it's far too early to make a prediction. From this far out, it is a very, very even fight. This is why we really wanted this to get confirmed, and we were very happy when it was confirmed, because on paper, this is a remarkably even fight. The stats are very, very similar. They're of a very similar age. They're of very similar weights. They've got very similar reach. They have pretty similar experience. I technically think Tommy Fury has more fights, but really, when it comes to the big stage, Jake Ball's had more experience. So, on paper, it is remarkable even and really it comes down to ability training all of those sorts of factors and personally I think it's too early to make a prediction um, so I won't be siding yet on Tommy Fury or Jake Paul because I just think it's a bit too early obviously Showtime will hopefully produce some behind the scenes footage that we can take a look at to see Jake Paul's training regime Tommy Fury's training regime yesterday Tyson Fury confirmed that he will be flying out to Las Vegas in a couple weeks to help Tommy Fury train which hopefully will be a key asset Jake Paul in response said he's going to get Hasbullah to come and help him train and will be at the fight in December 18th but yeah John Fury has remarkable belief in his son that he is going to beat Jake Paul and going to make it in the boxing world he has ambitions of being a world champion Tyson Fury confirmed that in an interview before the Deontay Wilder third fight so you know this really is belief in Tommy Fury that he will go and beat Jake Paul and that's where this pressure thing comes from you know they're putting this uh, um, incomprehensible amount of pressure on him for the name change, for the retirement from boxing. It all comes from a good place. It comes from a place of support. They want him to do well, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with. They're going down the hard route and basically he's saying to Tommy that the reality is if you want to be world champion one day, you will have to develop that mental toughness to fight off this sort of stuff. You can't go into the ring feeling nervous, feeling like you can't beat Jake Paul because that's not going to make you world champion. You need that iron toughness that Tyson had and is part of the reason for his massive amount of success. Well, th this, is the, this is the interesting thing mentioned about pressure because obviously Tommy is growing up in a world full of pressures full of you know yeah. difficult things and and I think with Tyson there was a lot more time to ease into the celebrity uh, social exactly. media was nowhere near as big as what it exactly. is now and I think yeah. Tommy is is kind of being catapulted into this which can't be easy yeah. for the lad um but but Jake Paul seems to want to make it even worse, and uh, by 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 Jake putting these big bets on and saying five hundred grand and 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 you or you change your name and all of this sort of stuff, you know if pressure is something Tommy is maybe not comfortable with, Jake Paul is going to do everything he can to ramp that up. Um, 
No, because now we know what we've got to do with Tommy. Get mm. his mind right. You mm -hmm. know, it's not Jake Paul. It's not, no, he's beat better men than Jake Paul already. Mm -hmm. He's already beat better than Jake Paul. Mm -hmm. It's not Jake Paul's thing. It's occasions. You know, it's a massive occasion for Tommy. Yeah. You know, he's got his girlfriend. He's got a lot to live up to. He's got Tyson. He's got the Fury name. But we're going to work on that. We could that can that can be adjusted. We can make adjustments. Jake Paul uh, can't. And yes, I think it is pretty safe to say that if Jake Paul does lose to Tommy Fury, his reign is over. He's not going to come back. He's not going to do a, a rematch or redemption fight. I, actually, he might do if the paycheck's hard enough for Tommy. But you know, he can't come back from that. If Jake Paul loses to Tommy Fury or any of his future opponents for that matter, then it is over. It relies on a streak of of, of being on top of your game, winning. You know, even if it's by decision, you have to win. I mean, Tyron Woodley came the closest to knocking out Jake Paul although the same thing that happened in his last four UFC fights that led him to get fired in April happened again in that fight he was just too patient he didn't unleash like he needed to which probably would have seen the end of Jake Paul's reign um, and I think Jake Paul kind of knew that going into it obviously there's that famous round four photo where Jake Paul's thrown up against the ropes and you know that's the first time we've really seen Jake Paul be truly tested whether Tommy Fury would be able to do the same thing or not is yet to be seen however you know on paper it looks very very even and I think this is the most 50-50 fight we've seen in quite a while especially in the YouTube boxing sphere now whether Jake Paul will be genuinely looking over the head of Tommy Fury into the future I can pretty confidently say he probably will be that was the same attitude he had for the Tom Willie fight same attitude he had for the Ben Askren fight same attitude he had for the Nate Robinson fight. He's always looking ahead into the future, what path he wants to go down. He produced that hit list in August of all the names of famous boxers, UFC fighters, whoever he wants to fight. You know, had some of the largest names in the world. Canelo, uh, Jorge Masvidal, Kamara Usman, Javonta Davis, Floyd Mayweather. You know, he has ambitions of going beyond Tommy Fury. Tommy Fury, he doesn't see as the end of the road, which whether that mentality will pay off like it did in the time Will he fight? We'll have to wait and see. I don't know whether Tommy Fury is doing the same thing. He hasn't really confirmed. Obviously, John Fury is looking ahead to try and fight Logan Paul, but after that, he hasn't said any real opponents that he wants to go and fight. So that really will be interesting to see whether man which mentality actually perseveres. The mentality of looking over ahead onto a future course like Jake Paul is, or the more conserved mentality that Tommy Fury has of just focusing on this one fight. However, it's certainly easy to say that John Fury's mentality is unchanged. He fully 100% believes that Tommy Fury will splatter Jake Paul and the consequences will be of epic proportions if he weren't to do that. So I think Tommy Fury will need to certainly put some work in over the next 47 days leading up to this fight. But it's all remained to be seen. We have a bit of an update on the Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury fight, specifically the legal documentation that will enforce this idea of, you know, Tommy Fury will have to change his name if he loses to Jake Paul. And unfortunately, we've hit a bit of a roadblock today. The contracts were revealed, and it has been announced that the name change that if Jake Paul were to beat Tommy Fury, then Tommy Fury would have to change his name to Tommy Fumbles, is not a legal requirement. And this is not, unfortunately, a huge surprise. People were thinking that this would happen in the same way the Tyron Woodley tattoo wasn't a legal requirement. It was just sort of for publicity. It seems like the Tommy Fury name change will be of the same same fate. This is quite unfortunate. It's obviously, the name change spiced things up a little bit. It kind of added this other dimension, which makes it quite fun of, you know, Tommy, you have to win because if you don't win, goodness Christ, you are not going to have a career in boxing. You know, the rest of the Furies aren't going to talk to you and you have to get your name changed and be humiliated by all the reporters after the fight in the post-fight press, press conference by being called Tommy Fumbles. You fumbled the bag, you fumbled the fight, you fumbled everything. Now, this is sort of strange considering the actual idea for the name change of Tommy Fury came from his older brother Tyson Fury in an interview before his Deontay Wilder fight. He was the one who suggested this, not Jake Paul. Jake Paul didn't come up with it. He kind of nursed it along, I guess, because he gave Tommy Fury the extra money if he were to beat him, but the condition would be if he were to lose, the stakes were raised, he would have to change his name. I'll show you both of the clips that kind of add a bit of context. I think the fight needs to happen. Him and, him and uh, Jake Paul, Tommy and Jake will get the fight done and um, if Tommy can't splatter Jake Paul I'll retire him from boxing myself he doesn't need to be about if he can't beat Jake Paul forget about boxing because he's got ambitions of being a world champion 
if I mind beating some YouTube guy. But if Tommy has got any ambitions on being a world champion, his name's Fury. If he can't beat Jake Paul, I'll have to change his name. How about that? Um, he doesn't want to. I'm sure. Really <laughs> right. really um, Are you agreeing with that, Tommy? Oh, I'm agreeing. Don't worry about if you that. can't beat him, your name's getting changed. But yeah, it's really quite sad. I mean, Tommy Fury, when he did accept to uh, take negotiations with Jake Paul, did use some very specific phrasing, get that sent over to my lawyers right now, we'll have a look over it, because he might want to revise some of the parts of that. That is more understandable, considering that he will want to work parts out of it. That, that's pretty normal, and especially with this sort of contract with Jake Paul, putting in all these different things, and, you know, th that's part of the reason why the negotiations took so long. This was not a regular boxing negotiation this was taking things out putting things in and it was basically a very messy situation that's why it took so long that's why it took so long for the fight to get confirmed you know they went into negotiations in early october they it only got confirmed a couple of days ago uh, at the end of october part of the reason for that was it just took so long to exchange parts of the contract now because this isn't a legal requirement obviously it's a sign it's not going to happen in fact i don't think it will happen if tommy fury loses to jake paul it'll be a tragedy for so many different reasons but he's not going to change his name he's going to go off somewhere live in the middle of sahara desert as eddie hearn suggested he's not gonna bother really i mean that's that i mean it's understandable you know why would you voluntarily change your name once you've lost a fight jake paul won't really show interest you know jake paul didn't really show a huge amount of interest after the Tyron Woodley fight as to him getting the tattoo, even when he refused. I guess he got it weeks later, but by then the hype had died down, no one really cares. He obviously asked in the post-fight interview, oh, if you get the tattoo, we'll have a rematch. That never happened, obviously. It wasn't part of the Jake Ball agenda to have a rematch with Tyron Woodley. It's not going to be part of the Jake Ball agenda if he does win against Tommy Fury to go and have another rematch with Tommy Fury. There's just no point to it, and it's a waste of time, it's a waste of resources. The pay-per-views won't sell as good, because they will know that, you know, Jake Paul will most likely beat Tommy Fury. Uh, yeah, it, it just won't happen. However, I don't think this drastically dampens down the pressure. The pressure for Tommy Fury is insane, and it's fundamentally still there. I think most of the pressure comes from his family, specifically John Fury, his father, who has a very strong attitude towards him, and his older brother Tyson. Now, all of the pressures that they've added on to him have all come from a good place. They want him to do well, but they've highlighted, they've stuck on the point that Tommy Fury needs to develop the mental toughness. He needs to be able to handle big occasions and be able to take them in his stride and waltz out to that boxing ring and go and show them what he's made of. That's what they want to work on because he's a 22 year old young man who's never had a big boxing occasion as of yet. This is going to be his first one. Jake Ward is more used to this but as a result Jake Paul will target this and try to hone in on that as much as possible. Do everything he can to get into Tommy Fury's head and the big question will be will Tommy let that get to his head or will he go into that ring having full confidence that he can do it and knock Jake Paul out because you know I from an outlook from this far out it's a very very 50 50 fight I'm not making any sides you know I don't think I, I think it's too early to make a prediction basically you know we're still 46 days out a lot can happen um but it, from an outlook and from this far out it is a pretty even fight stats very even height you know reach they're all very, very different. The stats are very, very equal. You know, the heights, the reach, the weight, they're all very, very, very similar. So this is why this fight, number one, is so good. And also, as we get closer to the fight, we'll see more training footage, we'll see more showtime uh, like behind the scenes. So we can take that information, then we can make a more accurate prediction. But from an outset, very even. And I think these pressures hopefully will help Tommy Fury. He has a very good support network around him. Tyson Fury would know all the mental health tips and tricks that Tommy will need because Tyson's done it before him. And John will no doubt has some very good tips as well. Tyson's going out to Las Vegas to go and train with him, which will be a key asset. And I think that will be probably one of the most underrated assets uh, of Tommy Fury's camp. Um, I mean, in response, Jake Paul wanted Has Bullet to come and train with him. Uh, I think that's more of just a status symbol thing and a response, but. Tyson Fury will be a key asset. He has all the connections you could ever want. I've said this before, but the nutritionists, the best physiotherapists, the best trainers, best sparring partners, everybody. Um, so that will hopefully add to Tommy Fury's arsenal that he will take into that ring on December 18th. 
But yeah, it's interesting to see that this pressure of the name change isn't a legal requirement because frankly, if Jake Paul beats him, he doesn't really care whether his name is changed. It's just a tool that he's using now to try to add pressure to Tommy Fury, to try and have leverage on Tommy Fury, to try and tweak his tweak his mental health as much as possible just knock him off a little bit knock him off and knocking him off a little bit can make a big difference in the fight and if he's got in the back of his mind when he's walking into the ring oh if i don't win this then i'm gonna have to get my name changed then i'm gonna have to retire from boxing as eddie hearn suggested going out to the sahara desert and never laying his hands on boxing gloves ever again out of embarrassment if he's got that in the back of his mind then that is probably going to hinder him if he can't deal with it, which is what the theories are so heavily developing. And Jake Paul will not have any of that because he's this disruptor into the mainstream boxing world. He doesn't have any uh, uh, but behind pressures because he's going at this on his own way, on his own trajectory. Tommy Fury has a lot of pressure that Jake Paul doesn't. One of KSI's former sparring partners has betrayed KSI today and has gone into Jake Paul's camp to go and help him train for his next fight against Tommy Fury. Now I have a lot to add on this and it's a very interesting topic to talk about so make sure you watch the end of the video to get my full analysis of it. Now this has caused a lot of tension for very obvious reasons. You have some very dedicated KSI fans who want to kind of protect the idea that KSI is going to come back to boxing which we really do all hope for but the problem is we haven't had any sort of action from him in the last two years where he fought Logan Paul on November 8th of 2019. Since then we haven't had anything at at all, no sparring footage, and no nothing at all in the way of proper evidence. However, we have had the word of KSI that the intention is there. He does want to return to boxing, he, but he just hasn't given any date, any time, any even remote period that he's going to think about starting a boxing camp. Put, push me to a, uh, a different level, me, you know, like who just trains. That's all he does, yep. trains. Yep. Like, yep. you know, doesn't fight as well, he just trains. And <clears throat> the guy I have now, well, the guys I have now, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're just they're pushing me to a, a different level because they go, yeah, you have power, you have all of this, all these attributes, but you don't know how to find the target, mm. and that's what comes with technique. Mm. Yes, you've got the dog mentality, that's dope. You you know we've got that in the in the yep, bank. Yep. We know you've got the power. Okay. We know you've got all these other things to speed, but you don't have the accuracy, and you that comes with. <clears throat> technique mm. and that's what we've been working on just making sure my technique so you're still is there. training oh of course bro do you bro, you're, oh, you're yeah, in yeah, the yeah, trenches yeah. i bro i still spar i still go in you know to the fucking gym going doing the fucking bursa climbers and yeah how, how often do you go to the gym bro like obviously this week has been nuts yeah but normally four or five times oh fire <laughs> He's just said a number of fundamental things. Number one, he doesn't want to start a boxing camp uh, straight before a tour or after a tour. He wants to have a break before or after going into a boxing camp. That's primary thing number one. That was one of his big gripes that he had about coming off a tour, the New Age tour in 2019, and going straight into uh, camp with Logan Paul. And basically now he doesn't want to do that in hindsight, which is fairly understandable, but that leaves a big problem. So you see, a lot of KSI fans want KSI to get in the ring like soon for good reason of course because if KSI doesn't get in the ring soon and obviously he wants that big fight with Jake Paul that's the juicy thing that everybody wants um, if he can't get in the ring or getting boxing camp rather soon, then that disparity in ability grows by the day as Jake Paul's working at a million miles per hour, you know, taking these fights every four to five months, getting better and better and better opponents, getting the best trainers, the best uh, coaches, nutritionists, everything. He's working 100% at boxing, but... KSI, he's not that dedicated to one thing. He's been primarily focusing on his music in this year, basically. For the entirety of 2021, that's been his primary focus. He hasn't particularly hidden from that either. You know, he his music is his number one focus. Now, it has produced some great results for him. Of course, he had number one album back in the summer. He had a very successful album release. Uh, he hit brief, briefly hold, uh, held Ke Lil Wayne's most popular song on his Spotify tab. Um, and that, that, that 
that collaboration did very, very, very well. So it is working for KSI in the music industry, but the big problem is obviously with the boxing. And then it, we also had a downward spiral when the KSI got ill as a result of overworking on the music, which obviously meant he couldn't train as much, he couldn't get in the gym as much. He did talk about it on the Impulsive podcast he did back in the summer. So it's not looking good for KSI. And then he has a tour starting on January 20th, a EU tour. So all across Europe, he's going to all different cities of the countries of Europe and performing all across that month until February 25th, where he ends his performance in Webley Arena. So that really leaves the early t- earliest time he can start a boxing camp in April or May if he wants to break off that tour, which I'm sure he will do. And even then, is he going to focus on developing his next album or going into a boxing camp? Well, I would side on the album most likely. So, you know, basically to KSI fans, which, you know, I am a KSI fan. I would like to be optimistic about it. However, I just don't realistically think it's going to be anytime soon. To the KSI fans, K- KSI is unboxing anytime soon. I don't think that's particularly a mystery. You know, I don't think that's, he's particularly hidden that. Um, he has remained adamant, however, that he will return to boxing, specifically to get this Jake Paul fight. He really is passionate about the idea of knocking out Jake Paul. You know, they have a lot of history together. Obviously, that was the first name he called out when he did the Jake Paul, Logan Paul after beating Joe Weller. Jake Paul was his primary target and Logan Paul was the only person who actually stepped up after all the shenanigans of promoting their dad to go and fight him and everything. But this fight is really wanted. You know, KSI fans are adamant on the idea they want Jake Paul flat out on the canvas and nobody so far has been able to do it. Tyron Woodley hasn't been able to do it, Ben Askren, Nate Robinson, anybody, Gibb, anybody. So KSI is seen as the gladiator to do it. You know, Spartacus standing up on the hill and he's going to go and take down Jake Paul. Now, when it comes to a sparring partner, I think a lot of people are blowing this up far larger than it really is. You know, a sparring partner is, it doesn't have to swear allegiance to KSI if he goes and trains in KSI's camp for a bit leading up to the Logan Paul fight. Obviously, it's a, it's a little bit distressing. Um, I mean, maybe, you know, they didn't get along well or, or anything. We can't know that, of course, because it's internal. But he doesn't have any particular allegiance to KSI. He's just a sparring partner. He's also an 8-0 boxer himself. So going to train with an up-and-coming boxer like Jake Paul, who's making big moves, not exactly a bad idea from a career perspective. If you can go and train with the guy who's hot right, right now, who's making all the money, who's getting all the attention, fine, do that. You know, that's great for your career. Um, KSI, you know, obviously hasn't been very active at all. So I don't think it's a really big deal. KSI did respond to the uh, Instagram post from the actual sparring partner himself with the eye emoji looking the other way. It didn't really particularly mean anything of such. Um, I guess it was sort of just okay, you've gone to train with Jake Paul, that's a little bit scummy, but whatever. Um, But personally, I don't think it's a huge deal. I know a lot of people are making it out to be a big deal. I don't think it really is. He's a sparring partner. He has his own independent career. He doesn't need to swear allegiance to anybody he trains with. And it's also not like KSI's friend has gone to train with Jake Paul or like Deji's gone to train with Jake Paul. If that happened, that would be a far more distressing scenario because that would be someone close to KSI. But this is some random sparring partner that just helped him in his Logan Paul camp. You know, you don't have to swear allegiance to them. You can't, it's not like you have to not train with the enemy as it were, you know, it's not like that, it's just, it's not that big a deal. I don't think this was orchestrated by Jake Paul either, I know some people have been saying that, like it was great mastermind plan, like some puppet master from Jake Paul's side of things to go and get one of KSI's former sparring partners, maybe he didn't even know, maybe he did, so what, it just doesn't really matter. Now today we also had a big win slash loss, depending on how you see it, for Deji. Deji's old boxing gym, Vic's boxing gym, that led to his failure against Vinny Hacker has shut down today. Now obviously I don't want to celebrate a business shutting down, but this boxing training gym in particular was had some fatal flaws. These were all heavily documented by Deji's girlfriend, Dune. Uh, when they went out to fly to train for this Vinny Hacker fight, they made so many different mistakes that you don't want to make in a boxing camp. Eating unhealthily, drinking every night, not actually training. It was more like a holiday than it was an actual serious boxing camp training trip. I am here to talk about Deji's team and I am not gonna bash
bash their boxing skills, I'm gonna bash their actions, rather their behavior during this quarantine trip, and what I would have liked to see differently. First of all, the two weeks we spent in Cancun felt more like a vacation than actual training. I don't think there was one day where Deji's team wasn't drunk on tequila. You do that on vacation in your private time, right? But not during this quarantine trip, all right? A, a, a boxing trip. They just gave me drunk vibes, which is not okay at all. Other than that, these guys pushed freaking fast food under Deji's nose, you know, chocolate, burgers, whatever, fries. While he had to lose weight, he had to get to the 185 pounds mark. It came to the point where Deji and I just stopped eating with them because they became just so much of a trigger. And the thing is, they didn't even try to hide it. They made so many Instagram stories about it. They easily spent like 85% of their day at the pool drinking tequila, flirting with other women, like a lovely team. It's amazing. Also, you have worked with Deji twice now. You knew what Deji's weaknesses were, but you did not tackle them. Instead of one hour boxing training, how about you do one hour of cardio and then one hour of boxing training? Anyways, the least you could have done was, you know, knock on Deji's door at 6 a.m. in the morning, make the guy suffer. But you were probably too hungover to do that anyway, so I had to do it. Also, you were soft and weak on him, as was I. And this was all as a result of several different people involved in Vic's boxing gym. Strangely, Deji went back to the same people who let him lose against Jake Paul in their fight in 2018, which not is a thing that you do often unless you had some crazily good chemistry with your trainer that is irreversible that you wouldn't find with anybody else. But really, you know, if you lose, you don't often go back to the same people who allowed you to lose. And especially when you blame things like cardio uh, and stamina, which were his key downfalls in the Jake Paul fight and was what we really wanted to see him improve on in the Vinny Hacker fight, which, you know, obviously never happened. He was even in worse shape for his redemption fight than he was for his original fight. These points were all picked up on by KSI he released a very truthful, and that was the key word, truthful, not necessarily nice, but words that Kay, uh, the Deji needed to hear. He released that in a video a couple of months ago. Here's that. Now, Deji, I'm going to talk to you like no one else will around you because I'm your brother. All I want is the best for you. I don't want anything from you. I don't need anything from you. I just want you to do well. I want to help you. So, I'm going to be real with you. Your work ethic is terrible. I am disappointed in your team and the people around you, man. How and why they thought it would be a good idea for you to enter the ring looking like that is beyond me, man. It was, it was embarrassing. Have they no shame or are they there just to massage your ego while you're still paying them and giving them clout? For that fight, you weren't fit. You weren't fit enough at all. So why would they allow you to enter the ring unfit like that. Deji man, how the hell have you managed to look worse in your redemption fight? That's like as if AJ, after losing to Andy Ruiz, decides, oh, let me fight Tommy Fury, and then he loses again. Do you know how ridiculous that is? And it's not like as if Tommy Fury just beat him. Tommy Fury annihilated him. Do you know how unbelievable that is? You were in better shape fighting Jake Paul than you were fighting Vinny Hacker. How can you actually be proud to jump on that scale looking like this. We were all expecting you to show off your abs after all the hard work you've been putting in because this was your time to prove all the haters wrong after training five times a day and instead, we get a junk food figure. So obviously we're not gonna have a kumbaya for the closure of a business. However, it was quite heavily documented how corrupt and how strange their practices were, especially in relation to Deji. And it was basically like Deji was the only person keeping them alive. They had several different, very troublesome people in the camp and Deji really didn't put his foot down. He kind of had yes men all around him, which basically came from this circle of people that he was paying. Basically it was a very, very messy situation situation and obviously Deji hasn't gone back to them to go and train again for his redemption fight for his loss at the redemption fight if that makes sense uh, not surprisingly of course because they had fundamentally flawed practices but I'm thankful that Deji seems to be getting better. Yinka posted a couple of days ago that Deji was in superb shape uh, when he when she was asked about it on Twitter. Yinka, having lost a lot of weight herself, would know what that would look like. So that is very, very positive and good news. It seems like the 130-ish days off that Deji has taken uh, away from the internet has helped him tremendously, which is really what we wanted originally from the Vinny Hacker fight. But if he's learnt his lesson now, he's learnt his lesson now. He didn't 
learned the easy way, but he learned the hard way. The most important thing is he learned in the end. Hopefully, we have some announcement of a, a redemption fight in the next couple of months. Because really, what we want, we want to see Deji back in the ring. We want to see him doing well in the best shape of his life. Really, actually putting some work in and putting that talent to good use that KSI has hailed all throughout this. You know, KSI has remained in the same uh, uh, position where he's constantly said that Deji is far more naturally talented at him than him when it comes to boxing. It's just KSI has a good work ethic and Deji has no work ethic. He's a better boxer than me. Like, 100% he, like, he's just naturally better. He's like a better athlete. He's naturally, bro, he's like, I remember in school, he destroy me at like um, 100 meters and stuff like that. He was just naturally an athlete. Like he's got everything. He's so talented, but he doesn't have the work ethic. That's the thing. I, I'm not talented, but I have the work ethic. And that's why I just surpass him in everything because he just, he's just too la lazy. He's just too lazy, man. And it's just, it's so frustrating because I just, and maybe, hopefully, Deji has overcome it now. He hasn't had a good work ethic in the last, well, forever. Um, and that really showed in both fights in particular. You know, he wasn't even in good shape. It's one thing if you're in good shape and you have good cardio and everything and you lose. That's one thing. It's another thing if you don't train, you clearly haven't done enough work, you clearly haven't done, focused on the key areas where you needed to improve on from last time. You clearly haven't learnt your lessons and that's why you lost. That is why it was so frustrating that he lost to Vinny Hacker. It wasn't that, you know, he lost, but he tried his absolute hardest and he, he, you know, he was training every day and I was training five times a day. It wasn't that. It was just he clearly hadn't trained. You know, when he got on those scales, there was no muscle mass on him. He was quite severely overweight for someone who was going to get into a boxing ring. Anyway, it's good news that Vic's boxing gym is shut down. You know, he's not going to ruin anybody else's boxing camp. I don't think anybody will go back to them after what happened to Deji in the Vinny Hacker fights. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Subscribe and I will see you in the next one.